I'm hungry. I mm. wonder what's on the menu. Oh, it's coming right ah! past. <laughs> Looks like it's shitty CGI. What, what great CGI. That was made in the 70s. Just... Just like DVDs. Right now. DVDs were invented in the 70s, I think. By oh, George Al Lucas. Yeah, by uh, Al, Al Gore. <laughs> so that was Halloween. Yeah. Too bad you didn't have to watch it. <laughs> it's a good movie. Yeah, it was, actually. It's, I like it. This is my second time seeing it, and it uh, didn't scare me as much, because uh, we were making terrible jokes the entire time, but the first time I watched it, it got me quite a bit. It's good. I also watched it at like 11 o'clock at night, and I was super tired, and the jump scares actually got me, so. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things I like, because it did invent a lot of like the cliches of the genre. Like, like Jamie, or like actors that are way too old to play high schoolers. <laughs> Jamie, Lee Cur Jamie Lee Curtis looked ancient. <laughs> this, this is the youngest Jamie Lee Curtis has ever looked. Yeah, and she looks like she's 35. God, I look 20 years old. Apparently she was 20, though, so... But, like, it, it invented the cliches like the, Oh, look, he's dead. Oh, he's alive. And so, you know it's coming. But it still scares you. I liked a lot of the cinematography in, the, in this. Very much. That's... John Carpenter's good at that. Yeah, just yeah. some of the ways that they framed it. Like, there was a scene where... Um, well, it was at the beginning of the movie where they've got that perspective shot, and uh, that was pretty rad. Yeah, uh, I don't know how to formulate shots. Shot. That, yeah, that one shot. It was like yeah, it was the perspective shot of the guy of Michael looking in on the house. You mean the very first shot? Yeah, that's what I. Oh said. wait, no, no. There's the one. Oh yeah, that is where yeah. he's a little. He's like the six foot tallest child. Oh yeah, he's, <laughs> he's obviously yeah, he's, a. A fully grown man in a children's outfit, like walking around with a camera. I did not notice that the first time. <laughs> I noticed a lot of things on a second viewing that I didn't the first time. That I'm like, hmm. Like how much product placement was in there? Did you notice that? I saw a ton. There's like Jolly Time. There was Quaker Oats. There was just products, like name brand products, obviously placed in full lighting to be looked at. I don't know if that was intentional, but maybe he was trying to make it look like every town USA. Oh, we got to tell them about the, the, the setting. So it takes place in Nowheresville, Illinois, uh, but it's actually filmed in February in New Jersey, right? Uh, no, I think it was filmed in California. What? But it's, well, it's, well, you said something about New Jersey. It's, it's, based, it's based on the town John Carpenter grew up in. In New Jersey. Haddonfield, New Jersey. And it's, which is right outside Voorhees, New Jersey. Oh. Which is Jason's name. <laughs> In Friday the 13th. Excellent. And yeah. I kind of wonder if that was intentional. But, I mean, try as they might, you could tell it was filmed in spring. Yeah. Like, everything everything was very green, and, you know, they, they had a couple of shots on the ground in the cemetery, and, like, there was, like, flowers blooming, and there was... <laughs> October! It's that time of year. Yeah. The time when they used the same four children dressed up in sheets and bags... Over and over again. I got a rock. <laughs> I got Iran. I got strife in the Middle East. Also, oh, uh, I got yeah, it. Yeah. Hey, it took oh, yeah. me a second. All right, what was the pun I was gonna use for this? <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember. If it, I mean, it probably wasn't that good. Oh, it was. Uh, where does he shop for his claws? That oh is, no, no, that's no! Shut up! That's for Nightmare on You Street. spoiled it. That's not coming out for two more days. Oh just, right. Just cut it. Yeah. Just cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it. Cut. Cut. All right. Um, so, uh, hey, Matt, cut it out. So, was this was this Freddy or Jason? Michael. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was abundant. No, no. I, 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 um... <laughs> no, he's ha he's Halloween. Yes. <laughs> My, oh. Michael Halloween. <laughs> he's Halloween man. <laughs> he's he has the power spooky. to be spooky no. <laughs> and killing people with knives, which I guess isn't really a superpower, but... Have you guys seen the trailer for uh, Baby Driver? No. Wait, like Baby Driver, like the Simon and Garfunkel song? What? Well, it's named after that. Isn't that yeah. the shitty it's... Alec Baldwin CGI movie? You're thinking of Boss Baby. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, it's, it's the, that's a horror film. It's the new Edgar Wright movie that comes out. Later this month, but will have already been out when this video comes out. Baby Driver, I think, is about like. I mean, there's a bunch of sex references in the song. 
What's it about? Is it actually about a driver? Well, yeah. And it's a baby? Isn't he well, like no, blind or name, something? His name is Baby and he's deaf. He's deaf. Oh, he's deaf. Well, well not deaf. He's, he's like... Hey, well, Baby, right? So he goes around on a round track, right? Because no one puts Baby in a corner. Right. Right. No, they, I think they go left. They continue... <laughs> <laughs> the point is, in the trailer for Baby Driver, they've got, like, Austin Powers masks. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you're supposed to get Michael Myers masks. This is Mike Myers. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, speaking of, fun fact, the mask on Michael in Halloween was actually a William Shatner mask, spray-painted white, with the eyes cut out. So, uh... It's on my shirt. It is? Oh, right there. You can go ahead and zoom in, Matt. Yeah, just, or I could just put a picture of it, like um, this one. Okay, that works. <laughs> where is it? <laughs> what, on his where, shirt? Where exactly is the picture? It's gone now. Oh. Get with it, Paul. <laughs> I guess. Aren't you, aren't you omniscient? Can't you be watching this video while we're recording it? I guess I'm just not hip enough. Excellent. So, uh, one of my favorite little things was uh, watching the... Uh, inside Jamie Lee Curtis's room and there's a poster of James Ensor and I just had the song Meet James Ensor by They Might Be Giants stuck in my head. Another They Might Be Giants reference for all of you guys tallying up there. I might make some more as the night goes on. <laughs> there was a reference They Might Be Giants in everything. Yeah, that'd be great. There was a surprising amount of underacting um, in this movie. Yeah. Like there would, there would be just lines that would just stand out as just being awful. Especially Michael. I mean, that guy had no emotion. Yeah, he barely <laughs> even spoke. Did, yeah. he, did he even have a line? No, no. Oh. <laughs> He's <a> silent. <laughs> no, no, let's let's uh let's see. Uh they uh Jamie Lee Curtis did the best pot impression. She was very she was obviously very high, method acting. <laughs> <laughs> it totally didn't just look like a regular cigarette. Yeah, yeah. And who was the who was the other? Then girl? they drive up immediately to their dad, yeah, which is a cop. Yeah, didn't smell any pot whatsoever. Good job, good job, America. Good job, America. Everyone smells like pot in America. Legalize it. <laughs> <laughs> I, no one do it. Yeah, it's up to you, people. Of the I, I mean, murder, not not pot. Oh, okay. Pot's dangerous. Pot's dangerous. It causes. Murder. Yeah, it could cause people to murder each other. <laughs> yeah, which, but which mur- is murder is safe. Right. So uh, nobody's hard. Oh, you have you have the thing. Well, let's talk about John Carpenter because he's one of my favorite directors. Right. Right. Although the thing is one of my favorite films. I I'm starting to get the sense that maybe John Carpenter was more of a hit or miss director, and I just saw all the hits first. Oh, okay. What else? What else but, did he make? That was well, that sounds like your fault. <laughs> Escape from Little China. Didn't he make that? No. <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, it's Escape from New York and Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> Escape from Little China. Escape from Little China. I'm a, I'm a cultured individual. I've seen a lot of so John I've seen I the, own most of John Carpenter's. I've seen the thing. Excellent. The practical effects in that always get me. I always want to barf a little bit in my mouth. I think The Thing is my favorite of his movies. Maybe They Live. It's between they, oh, The they Thing live. and They Live. The ending of They Live was... That always that'll always get with me. So especially this one too. And this this one's like a very close third. Yeah. Behind, uh, the thing and they live. This is the. Nice. It's surprisingly this one is dated in a wonderful way. It's obviously the seventies. Oh, I, I I was really sad. The Devo album, uh, the first Devo album, "Are We Not Men? We Are Devo," came out a couple months before this film was supposed to come out, and I'm very sad that no Devo was played. Just Blue Oyster Cult foreshadowing Don't Fear the Reaper. Yeah. Which is in every slasher movie. Is it really? There's more songs about death. It's in a lot. Do they at least do sympathy for the devil in any of these? You know, Pleased to meet you, won't you guess my name? Oh, I'm in... the devil! It's in Suicide Squad, if that helps. <sighs> oh, that's, that, was a, that was a train wreck, not a horror film. The pop cues in Suicide Squad made Forrest Gump look like a Tarantino film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Quite of the evening. I mean, the, the early afternoon. Uh, I mean, Halloween night! Uh, October 1st night! Oh, yeah, okay. Because this is coming out on the 1st. Great. Spooky. By then, yes. 
By then we'll all be found dead under overpasses in New Mexico. I'd, I'd rather be in old Mexico. And <laughs> Why? Well, you would be found dead under an overpass. In old Mexico? <laughs> in old Mexico. All right. Fly into Mexico, don't drive. Um, I should probably go ahead and do my spiel about the the golden years of horror films. No, oh, no. Because there was a period... I'm just going to t- check Twitter real quick. <laughs> 13 years, ironically, between 74 and 87, that all the greatest horror movies came out. Nice. And this was nice. This what, was the, what was the last? What was the last great horror film in 87? Either Hellraiser or Evil Dead 2. They both came out in 87. Wait, I don't was, know it the, was it the Hellraiser that had uh, Mark from The Room in it? Okay, that's Puppet Master. <laughs> <laughs> they both have a character named Pinhead. Pin. Oh, okay. So, I can't fault you for that one. Okay. <laughs> I will. Okay. Paul, <laughs> you thought Chucky was in Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, there's a, there's a, I'm getting all the actors confused. There's a fault with my stars, so. Would you mind hitting him for me? Just a little bit. I'll die of cancer before that. No, no, you hit Matt. No, why? <laughs> for setting uh, me up for that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because 74 was Texas Chainsaw. Then we got Jaws, Alien and Aliens. Oh, yeah. Aliens isn't a horror film. It's, got, it's horror action. Okay. Uh, horror Dawn action. of the Dead and horror Day action. of the Dead. Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. The Shining. Ooh, yeah. Halloween. The Th- Exorcist? The ex- I haven't seen The Exorcist, actually. <laughs> I've seen The Exorcist 2. Uh, <laughs> just- I just I bought The Exorcist yesterday. I'm going to watch it soon. You're going to watch it? In November, because it's October? Yes. Okay, great. What? Just for that, I'm not watching it till November. Oh, no. Nice. Um, I guess I have else? to present... Uh, you ended with The Exorcist. Uh, Exorcist, Hellraiser, Reanimator. And then just, like, a lot of good horror films, like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. Silent Night, Deadly Silent Night. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Mm-hmm. Superbly underrated. Yeah. Um, I actually was pretty creeped out during that film, but we're talking about Halloween. So uh, different holiday. Have they made a Thanksgiving a horror film? Uh, there's Thanksgiving. It's bad. Don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but Your turkey is cooked. There was a fake trailer for Thanksgiving before uh, Grindhouse Double Feature. Yeah. One of the fake trailers was for Thanksgiving. But it's not and unlike Hobo with a shotgun, they actually didn't make it. They didn't act, they did not make Thanksgiving. Okay. Thankfully, it's an Eli Roth film. We need as few Eli Roth films as possible. What else did he make? Cabin Fever, oh. Hostel. A hostel? Hostel. I thought you were about to say possum for a second. Possum. <laughs> possum. Eli Roth's possum. It had rabies. <laughs> it had a thirst for water, then a thirst for blood. That's the sequel to The Killer Shrews is Possum, actually. Possum. <laughs> We're so off topic. Oh, Halloween. Yeah, we can just cut all this, all this crap out, right? Or leave it. Nah, leave it. All right. So Halloween. What else? Uh, what else is there to say? Uh, it's one of the greatest horror movies ever, and you should watch it. It's pretty good. It's slow. Uh, yeah, it is. Enjoy a couple brews while watching it so that you uh, throw your phone somewhere so you don't end up looking at your phone. Because the tension builds and the tension's really good it if you're paying attention. It doesn't feel slow, though. Like, it feels like it, it takes enough time to it, do what it yeah. needs to do. Because yeah. a lot of slasher movies, I've seen a lot of slasher movies, I, yeah. and so many of them have terrible pacing. Because it's like all this build up, and then like all the deaths are in the last like thirty minutes. Yeah, it's like get to it. Just watch the last thirty minutes. Not, but you can't really do it in this movie because it it takes its time to set it up, and you you're actually with it for most of the time. So let's say let's compare these to Godzilla films. This one is like Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, right? There's lots of monster fights throughout the film. There's lots of murders throughout this film. And then you have, like, what's an example of last 30 minutes, all the killing? Prom night? 
Yeah, that's like the one with Cranston in it. You know, it's just like, oh, here's Godzilla about to attack the- Oh, the door closes! It's like, what the heck? Prom Night, starring Jamie Lee Curtis. What? Wait, the original or the remake? The original. Or the remake of the remake? The original Prom Night. Okay. Sorry, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's kind of weird to think, because, like, this was her first film. I was kind of surprised by that. Introducing Jamie Lee Curtis. It's weird, because we just kind of think of her as, like, a regular actress, because we just grew up with her and everything. But back in, like, after this came out, she was, like, a horror movie scream queen. Mm. Ah! Actually, her screaming in this movie was not good. No. She was in this, she was in Prom Night, she was in The Fog, which is also John Carpenter. Not bad. Not bad? Good. What's the, what's the villain? Is it Fog? It, well, it's... Dead Pirates. Ghost Pirates. Is she for my timbers? Can that just be the last line of the whole of this video? <laughs> Alright, we're cutting it there. <laughs> Shiver my timbers. Oh yeah.